UVC now. This is something that has been being used more and more in indoor grow rooms, not for a particular to initiate more plant growth per se, but more for pest prevention and elimination. Can you talk to us about that? Yes. Well, first off, I think in the next few years, UVC will replace 90 to 95% of all pesticides and predator bugs. So absolutely, um, UV can be used to combat bugs, to fight mold, and to enhance THC and terpenes. So when we, this has been a long thing that we've, took us a really long time to develop um, what's called the tarantula predator. And it's basically a UVC light that's used to fight bugs is the main, um, the main reason. And, you know, we've had a lot of R&D on it and things have evolved a lot. But it's evolved to the point where we can, it's immunity to thrips is what we call it. So if you've got a thrip infestation, you can wipe them out in a little over a week by using 10 watts per 16 square feet for 15 minutes a day, which is it's pretty, it's pretty crazy because in all my experience, it's impossible to do. Like to be, to be able to beat thrips without a pesticide or predator bugs. We actually experimented with like, cause we've done a lot of controlled experiments where we're introducing thrips, spider mites and all that types of stuff. Um, so we try to combat thrips with predator bugs and like one of the biggest um, cucumeris, swirsky, hypoasis are three huge ones. And then I forget the pirate bug is another one, but anyways, we would, we'd ask what the recommended amount would be. And we would order four times the amount and introduce them to the room and not be able to beat thrips, like maybe control them a little bit. But um, when you can compare the efficacy, it's not even close. We actually believe that using UVC for five minutes a day has a higher efficacy than using six or seven different predator bugs as a prevention. Um, So it, we, it's not a cure to everything. Like um, when we actually, our very first test that we did, we actually beat spider mites when we were introduced, introducing two to three. And then we got into tests where we're introducing hundreds and we weren't able to beat spider mites when we were letting, introducing hundreds to a plant and letting them establish for 36 hours, but we were able to slow them down by easily 90%. Um, so like we have footage of in, like what they can do in 36 hours and then treating it for 10 minutes a day and then jumping ahead a week later and being able to see the difference. And it's, it's really life-changing. Um, it basically breaks the rules of growing. When we were developing everything, um, I think that there's a lot of bad information out there. Now, UVC can be extremely dangerous, but so can sticking your hand in a blender while it's turned on. You know, <laughs> so like uh, if anything can be really dangerous. And like, I think that so many people have been scared about or like scared from all this bad information about it, like with actually other people's bad research slowed down our stuff. Well, it's not even bad research. We came across people actually faking their research. And the reason why we tried simulating exactly what they were doing, they were showing spider web, spider mite infestations with webbing and then showing it uh, seven days later clean and showing that that they were only using the light for a minute. So that was uh, a big obstacle because we were trying these treatments and not able to beat everything. And we're like, okay, well, this person is clearly faking their research and that's why you don't know about it. So we had to go outside the box and we started increasing things. And when we actually first started using UVC, um, we were beating thrips by, I would say, 97 to 98% using a five-minute treatment in the middle of darkness. And people say middle of darkness, they think, oh, hermine, and they get scared. It's not enough wattage to wake up the plants. And the light emits out, and it's like a big spotlight for insects to come in, and they're attracted to it. Um, so that's kind of the theory on how it kind of works. Well, at five, at five minutes a day, we were in the top 33 to 30 inches. It would be hard to find any thrip damage. You could only find stuff kind of underneath where the lights aren't being treated or stuff where it was off to the side. And um, it, it was really um, what happened is I had decided I wanted to try stressing the plants with UVC to enhance THC and terpenes. And I decided to do two 15-minute treatments to see what would happen. Well, six days later, there were no more thrips, and we we could not find them anywhere. Um, There's an IPM specialist named Matthew Gates who's based out of California. We flew him down to come and inspect the room um, just to see if he could find any thrips. And, you know, he spent a couple hours in the room, and, like, he was able to kind of see the, the footage, too, of when they were introduced and everything. He wasn't being able to find anything. And also there's a fellow who's got a YouTube channel named BC Bubble Man. 
Um, we had known each other for a long time, but we've kind of started hanging out from that um, point. He takes a lot of macro footage and he's into him. He made inventor of the bubble bags. And um, so he makes a lot of water hash. So him, he had a big interest in trying to see if he could find any, you know, any bug poo or anything like anything left over from any type of the thrips on any of the flour. And he wasn't able to. And, you know, after we had that crop, we know that, hey, we have broken the rules. <laughs> of growing because I've been at this my whole life and you've never been able to do this previously. And that's where, um, and then, then we also had something else happen that was an accident. Um, we had a timer fail and I came into a room and had all the plants just totally messed up and the, the, the lights were way underneath. They weren't even really close to it. And that's when we discovered that the UV it's almost like systemically going into the stem and able to stress out the whole plant. And we, we believe um, playing with these limits are going to be able to push plants to be able to get a higher terpene and THC levels. Like when you use UVA, um, I participated, well, I supplied a lot of lighting for a lot of different side-by-sides where people are going UVA versus not. And then they also did UVB versus not. And it was very conclusive that the UVB had such a higher efficacy where you saw a real gain on the CUA where UVA was almost not nearly as much. Like um, there's just so little UVA, like just in the, like even for example, in HPS, there's less than 0.2% UVA. So I, I think that the real gain is using like, well, UVB or UVC for the future to actually push the limits of real COAs, just to kind of like push the absolute boundaries of it. Um, I believe anybody that's telling you not to use it has never done any real research and they're just repeating what other people have said about it. That's awesome. So UVC, you said five minutes per day. What is the size of these lights and wattage and where do you position the lights? So we actually um, came up with an idea to make them float underneath. We actually have a utility patent that allows them to basically, you can get them at any level. So for every light that you have up above, you have two five watt strips that are 44 inches long and they're basically kind of floating underneath the canopy and you can you can they spin 360 degrees and you can kind of get them anywhere you want. Um, like with certain with like bad spider mite infestations, we like to bring the fight right to them and getting the lights as close as possible. Well, um, with thrips, you actually don't need to. Like on the very first crop that I had and I was experimenting, I was chasing the thrips around, like trying to get the lights as close to anywhere where I saw it and moving them constantly where then, you know, at the very end we accidentally wiped them out and then we just tried using that from underneath and to discovered we don't even have to we just have to have them mounted underneath it's like i thought at first i remember asking matthew gates i'm like do thrips have ears is, is this uv putting off a sound because we know that you know it you know the first six inches is where it really penetrates but for whatever reason um it's able to give the effect where it, it eradicates them like we're working with multiple universities on a get on white paper so we're gonna have a lot of real data so right now that's just a theory i, I don't like that was just, I didn't know what was happening. I can't even explain. Like on the very first uh, crop, I actually thought that we disabled them from being able to reproduce and then they died out. And they just died out by the end is what I thought. But then we just have too many examples of just coming in and cleaning out a room that's got a bad thrip infestation in eight days. So it's just, uh, it's just super effective against them. I think it's, it's like almost like the cure for cancer for plants because even if um, to be able to slow down, like to to mess up a plant's or a, a, a insect's DNA and RNA, because when you screw up the RNA, it's like how they're thinking and how they're communicating and they're, how they're, they don't act normally after their RNA is screwed up. So um, we have some really cool documentation of, you know, after treating spider mites and you see them after they've been, before they've been treated, and then you see them seven days later and they're just all sitting there all slow they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing setting up shop and just going like crazy so it's it's pretty incredible i actually think it's a lot bigger than medicinal plants i think like food crops stuff like for like greenhouses and strawberries that type of stuff um it's going to be huge it's going to make it's going to make an impact on um eliminating pesticides or like playing a, a critical role in it so that sounds like a complete game changer for sure. Now, I personally struggle with fungus nests. Does this work on fungus nests too? Well, we've had a lot of reports of it being extremely effective, but I like to be extremely conservative before I say, hey, this is going to wipe something out. But I think it, it's very safe to say it's going to make 
combating anything a lot easier. What's um, what they work very well for flying root aphids, but we actually have tested them on. There was someone that what's really incredible is when the lights go out and you turn on the predators, the r- flying root aphids land right on the predators. It's kind of like a best case scenario. They come right to it. I've, we've got documented footage of them all like sitting all across predators. And there was a fellow that did this for three days. And then a couple days later had them completely dead everywhere. Now root aphids, um, or could be impossible to beat like that because like an adult can spend the whole, its whole life in the medium still like just they don't have to leave but it's just um i believe for flying anything that is flying it brings them to them and the same thing with predator bugs why predator bugs would be a waste of money because you're going to just you're going to wipe them out you're going to screw up their rna and dna so they're not functioning properly anyways got it okay and you mentioned you run them during night why wouldn't you run them during the day um, just because it, it, it's so much easier for the bugs to see it because while the light is on, it's a lot harder. But when the lights are out, even though it's so low wattage to our eyes, it's just like they're attracted to it. Like I, I came across, um, like this is a video done years ago that's talking about UV and that how insects see UV. Like I actually really like having them, like say if you've got an entrance to a facility, having these in like a, a bunch of just the doorways of the entrance so that you can use them multiple times in the middle of darkness. So if something does come in, you have a good chance of disabling them from being able to reproduce already. So if they do make it in the room, they do die out. Yeah, I, I stand by, like, I think that, um, you know, it's it's just like anything. It takes a little bit to catch on, um, but we, we sell a lot every single day. And I believe it's just evolving to the point. Well, like in all my years of growing, what is the worst thing to do when you're growing? It's spraying. Everybody hates spraying pesticides. Like, I hate it. It's kind of nice when I guess if it's like an essential oil that smell makes you smell like a spa afterwards would be about the one exception, but there's very many or very little products that are like that, but it's one of the worst things to do. So to just um, like, I still think there's always going to be a place to use essential oils with alcohol. Um, like there's it's because it's friendly. The, it doesn't hurt the plants um, and you can pass any type of testing when you're using it. And just as a, because el- the bottom line is alcohol with essential oils can just kill a lot of stuff on combat, like on contact. So just using that the day that you plant or the day before you flip, even if you don't see anything, um, I still I still recommend it. Go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.